Okay, everybody, this is an overview of assignment number one. If you haven't noticed, you're in a, either a software engineering or a computer science master's program. If you're taking this class, I would hope that you're probably in one of those two programs. Which means one and, and only one thing. You're supposed to be not adverse to programming. You may not have a programming background if your undergrad was in business or healthcare management or something else, and you're now you're decided, oh, I want to study software engineering, or I want to study computer science or computer engineering or something. You might be changing majors, and I totally understand that. This is not what I'd call an easy program for you, if that is your case. So if you are a computer science undergrad, this is a piece of cake. You probably have done this before. This is an undergrad assignment given in a graduate level course. This is not hard. So, what are you going to do? You're going to use processes and you're going to define and you're going to program this tiny shell program called TISH, which stands for tiny shell. What's a shell program? This is a shell program. This one out here loaded a bash, bash shell, I believe. Your program is going to be like this. You're going to load bash. I think it's bash, actually. Yeah, there we go. And I got a bash prompt. And I can use an it's a shell on top of a shell. So you're going to write a program in C or C++. If you're going to do this correctly, you're going to write it in C. If you're going to take what I call plan B, so plan A is for people who already have a computer science background, who maybe have even taken this course at an undergraduate level, who already know how to program in C. Plan A is I want to be a good computer science student. You're going to do it correctly. Plan B is the alternate route for those who don't have the skill set. I can't teach you C programming. Take object-oriented programming in C++ if you want to learn C programming. I'm teaching it on the weekends actually this term. That's a good class because I'm going to start with C and then teach you C++. However, that's a full class in itself. <laughs> so. <laughs> If you want to get by in this class for purposes of learning how to do operating systems, you're going to take what I call Plan B, alternate route. And when I look at your program, I'm going to know you're on Plan B or you're going to be on Plan A, depending upon your programming skill. So here's how Plan B works. And Plan B is probably going to be even harder than Plan A, actually. So if you, if you, if you want the easiest routes, Plan A, just do what they ask for in this assignment. Plan B. You need to still write the code, but you're going to write it in pseudocode, or you're going to write it in another language, not using C. C is a little bit harder than, let's say, Java. But can you program in threads in Java? You can. You can. You can do this whole assignment in Java if you wanted to. It's going to be really hard to do it in JavaScript. <laughs> you're going to have to use Java or any other programming language that you want. You don't know any programming at all. I want you to do it in pseudocode. What does pseudocode mean? Give me the instructions that you would actually write in the programming language. If you're going to do pseudocode, however, you have to document what you're doing, which I think is harder than just writing it, actually. So you're going to go, as an example, let's go through some of the requirements and we'll see what I'm talking about. So in this exercise, you're going to write a small shell program um, that's going to run different programs in the foreground and the background mode. So the background here, usually when you log into a system, I showed you a few minutes ago, we have this terminal window if you're on a Mac system. If you're not, you might uh, install, if you're on a Windows system, you might get one of those little Linux boot up disks. If not, if you wait until after the break, I'm going to hopefully have cloud accounts for you. So you can telnet into a Unix server and write this if you want. Easier way, however, might be just to get one of those little boot up disks or install a virtual machine, put Linux on your Windows box or something. Use um, ah, If you're going to do that, you might as well use VirtualBox for it. So Oracle VirtualBox loads up actually and gives you the option. Of, I have Android operating systems on this one, but uh, you can easily install Linux in here and have a perfectly good running Linux box. And then if you take the Unix course, which is going to be offered probably in the fall, then you're, you're already set up for Linux. <laughs> you're already set up for Unix. Um, but anyway, but this isn't uh, this is an operating system, of course, not a Unix course, so you don't necessarily need it. But anyway, you're going to write one of these. 
it's just a program that's going to take commands and run the commands for you. So the assignment here is to build this little program here and you're going to run programs which are going to be the commands you're going to run in the foreground or in the background. So if I were to run a command here, if I just type in the command, I just run it or I can type it, put it in the background, but the background here says I put this one command in the background and gave me my process number, but it ran it because the foreground is taking the input. So we have this concept of multiple running processes, some in the foreground, some in the background. You're going to write internal and external commands. So an internal command in this shell here, actually now I had to, I ran this, I used this ampersand symbol and it ran it in the background for me in the shell, takes this, you can use the same symbol, you can use the same, you can transfer anything you know about the system functionality and use it, just write a shell to it essentially. Um, so in this particular case, um, I'm keeping track of here, we had this one process that I ran in the background, so you need to keep back track of your background, your foreground processes. Well, you can easily use this ps command, actually. You can use any Linux command you want to keep track of processes or jobs. I believe uh, jobs is going to be supported as well, but I don't have anything running, so jobs is not going to bring me back anything right now. But um, you can use Linux and Unix commands in your shell that you're creating. You can design the shell any way that you want to. You can do it in any language you want to. It's going to be easier to do it in C, and it's going to be easier to do it with threads. So what you're going to do is you're going to run and you're going to list, you can have internal and external commands. The internal commands are going to give you a list of all running programs in the foreground, all running programs in the background. That's about it. Quit. I think there's one for quit. Kill the pro running process in the background. Well, you can use a kill. As an example, there's a Unix command called kill where you give it a process number. Where's that process number I had up there? It was a 774. 774 is already killed, so there's no such process. <laughs> so, or whatever it was, 744, or whatever it was. I can't kill it. There's no such process running anymore. But if it was running, it would kill it. It would stop it. Um, so the precise requirements is to uh, create a prompt that kind of looks like that, or a prompt of your choice. Well, what's the prompt for those people who have never seen DOS before? This is the prompt here. That's how I know I'm in the bash shell. If I say if I type in exit, now I'm not, and I have my my user password, my um, home directory as my prompt. I can go into another shell, and now I have another prompt. Well, it's the same prompt, but it looks a little different, actually. Now it says localhost on it. Now it says localhost on there. So now I'm back to, well, that was as localhost too, but yeah. I actually, you have different shells actually. Um, if you're on a BSD system, I have like five different shells on this computer. But, uh, anyway, one of them is going to be uh, TISH, T I S. Actually, I might even have it here. No, I don't have it here. Um, I probably removed it. When we get back from the break, I'm going to show you some examples of some different shells when we get further into processes. But the concept is to, uh, Create the external and the internal commands. The external commands are going to be the command. Um, it's going to be um, an ex a name of a file you're going to run, like ls. You don't have to support all commands on the system. Just have it run something, like ls is a good one. Lists out the file system. Um, internal commands are going to be like by or exit to exit out of the shell. Um, or maybe one for um, ps. Show me the processes, show me the jobs that are running, the foreground and the background. So the internal commands are going to be the built-in ones that are into the shell, for example, by. External commands are going to be running a command outside of the program. So we have the foreground and we have the background. Here I demonstrated the ampersand here, run something in the background. You can just pass it through and run the, run the ampersand, run it in the background. You don't have to reinvent the wheel on how to run, how to run the process. If you read through here, you're going to have a list of uh, internal commands here, the by, the jobs, and the kill, that command I just ran. So you can just run kill. So we have a, a concept of threads where you're going to create, and if I scroll down here, this is about three pages long, so I'm not going to read the whole thing to you. Read through the assignment. This is the hardest one in the course. All the other ones are much easier. This is the hardest one, but it will definitely jumpstart your programming career. If you're, inter if you're interested in learning how to program, not a bad one to work with. It's going to be a challenge, however. So you don't know anything about programming. How are you going to write this thing? Well, you can go like this. You can say, um, 
I'm going to fake it, right? So this is plan B. I'm going to say the, the shell prompt. What am I going to do is write English instead of programming. So I'm going to demonstrate to you pseudocode. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see what I'm writing. I'm going to demonstrate to you a pseudocode as well as doc internal documentation. So let's take a look. Maybe make this a little bit bigger. Let's talk about the prompt because um, we want to make the prompt. So I'm going to make this into a comment. So I'm going to write it like this: the shell prompt um, should show like this. Um, Okay. This is what I'm giving me. This is what I'm doing for the assignment. So, um, let me write the pseudocode for the, the comment that tell me what I'm going to do here. So, let's see. Um, make prompt equal to dash. Yeah. Or you can say you know prompt. You can look it up and say, well, what's the syntax for the prompt? You know, prompt dash or something. And some kind of, this is what I call pseudocode. You're not really writing the code because you can't figure it out. But I would actually take it a step further and go, well, what is that? What if, how do you change the prompt? Let's see, if I were a computer science student, I knew how to use Google, I can come out here and go, um, change prompt in C plus, in C. Uh, change prompt in CMD, uh, uh, here we go. Let's see, make a prompt change, you know. And see, you know, and learn about prompts. And so it basically is a way of exploring the feature and then writing down, giving me what it would look like. Uh, other forms of pseudocode look like this, you know, if something, then, then something. Um, it's fake programming. You're going to write the program as if you're going to write the program, but you don't know anything about programming. Or you could take another approach to it, plan B, which is like, write the program. See if you can write the program. And if it doesn't compile, no problem. I'm not expecting it to compile. So some of people will take the plan A, which is write it as specified, use the commands, use the pthread libraries, see if you can do it. Plan B is see if you can just do it. If you can't do it, don't worry about it. Maybe you can get parts of it compiled, but you can't get other parts of it to compile. Maybe you can't get any of it to compile doesn't have to compile is what I'm saying. But the more you take a look at this, the more you learn about processes, <laughs> which is the learning goal of this. So you want you know, just make a graduate level attempt to do it and then fill in with um, you know, I have no idea, like you're gonna do like, I you know, you can go like this and go these these are comments by the way. I have no idea. <laughs> But the uh, example I found creates, uh, I found, creates a thread like this, you know, and it says a thread, thread p is equal to new thread or something. I don't know, you know, that's not really thread, but you know. And then go down to the next one and go down to the next one and see how far of it you could put it together. If you run into a really bad situation in which you can't even do this and the pseudocode option is not going to be working for you, another plan B is to give me about, if, if you're going to do this completely in writing, what you're going to do is describe how to write this. How, describe how to write this program and what you need to do in your own words without plagiarizing it. Don't plagiarize. Don't cut and paste off of the internet. Don't do that. That will earn you no points at all. Describe how you would use them. What are we going to do? Here's some recommendations and additional requirements. Forget the additional requirements, even if you're doing plan A, and just go with recommendations. To use the fork library with EXEC. If you get the book, in chapter three, there's an example of this shell. <laughs> if you just give me that example as is, not going to work. <laughs> it doesn't have all the features that this is asking for. So don't give me the example out of the book. You could experiment 
with different approaches to it, with different languages, it's going to look different than this. If you're going to use a different language, you're not going to have fork. Fork creates a thread. You're not going to have EXCC. Um, read through. Do not worry about the additional requirements. Only worry about the internal and the external commands. Give me a, th a shell of your choice using what you can do. So I'm going to have all extremes. I'm going to have some people who have no idea how to program. Well, don't worry about the stress of it working then. Just fake it as much as possible to give me as much of a, a as an attempt to demonstrate to me that you've looked into it, which is what you're doing. You're giving me partial. You're not going to give me a full implementation. If you are experienced in this, it's probably easier just to give me the full implementation. That's probably going to work better for you than giving me all. It's going to take twice as much work to fake it than it would be just to give it to me. And when I say fake it, it doesn't necessarily mean fake it, like copy and paste something that you found on the internet. I mean make an attempt to do it, an unsuccessful attempt perhaps, but it will still be an educational experience in that you're showing your own work and your own your own research, you can document here, I found this here, and I found that there, and I know how to do it. I, describe to me what you would do. If you're not going to give me examples, then you have to describe in a lot more detail what you would do. There's no minimum or maximum page amount. In fact, if you wrote this program, it probably would take about maybe two pages of code, I think, at the most. It's a very small program, actually. It's not really complicated. Not due until August 22nd, but don't wait till August 22nd. In fact, some of you might actually do this one last <laughs> because it's not, and some of the other ones aren't programming. Some of the other ones are just writing a paper, a comparison paper of memory. Some of them are writing demonstrations. So, But that's the one I would kind of start working on because it might take you about two months or so to put it together in the long run. But at least you'll learn more about programming and about threads and stuff. I'll leave you with that before our break. So next week, no class. Don't leave because you have to sign the roster, attendance roster. But no class next week. Instead, spend the time figuring out how you're going to write this program <laughs> and what you're going to do to it. So, all right, cool. See you in a couple weeks.